What's up, savages? So today we're going to make the uh, little convenience store here, inspired by the convenience store from The Simpsons, the Quickie Mart. Here's one from the game Tapped Out, mobile game. I don't know if anybody's ever played it. I used to play it before, but now I don't really got time for it. I haven't played it in years. And I didn't notice until earlier when I pulled this image up that uh, Homer drives a pink car. I've seen The Simpsons for years, grew up with The Simpsons, and didn't realize so right now that Homer drives a pink car. All right, so we just wanted the bare essentials here. Low poly store. So we have the parking lot, sidewalk, dumpster, parking lot, sidewalk, dumpster, and a brick wall there, brick wall there. Obviously, there the wall goes all the way around. There's a chain link fence, a fence there. There's a wall around the dumpster. There's a door back there, and uh, we don't have that door back there, that wall, chain link fence. fence. We just want the essentials here. And uh, this one, you can't see the roof of it, but you can see the roof here. And they have like this AC unit there, typical purple Simpsons color, and we'll have that there as well. And the door, of course. Entrance and some windows there. All right. So let's go over here to Blender. So this cube right here, we're going to convert it to our, our store right here. So first, what I want to do is count how many of the uh, panels we have here on our window. So you have one, two, three, four, five vertical panels for the front of the store here. So let me do that one for front of you on the number pad. Decimal key to zoom in center. Control R. I'm gonna go up here. Oops, gotta go to edit mode. Sorry, edit mode. There we go, edit mode. Control R. Put the mouse on the mouse on the top edge. Spin the wheel. So we can get five panels here. Let's see. There's five panels right there. Enter, enter. We make this wider. A S X. And just freehanding it here. I guess you want to be precise. Let's try. SX 1.5 enter looks a little better and then there's a panel there there and there all right so I make control R put one on top one around the middle one at the bottom there control R left click there one up here somewhere for the top of the window control R or the top of the door and one around here for the door handle and then this panel down there control R left click and drag around there enter all right and there's one down here too is for the door and we got the windows here on the side so now we got to add the additional ones for the other parts here on the door so to start making our frame so you want to see here that this is going to be our door right here and then this start part around here is going to be the window that's going to be the window there there's the door in the center so we're going to create the geometry to uh, extrude this here. That's what I did there. Shift Z. Extrude that out or make the panels for the door and window. All right. So I'm going to control R up here. Left click, drag it over. Just eyeballing it. And left click there. There we go. So I got the panel there for that. Now I'll make this one right here. Control R, left click. Oops, not there. Oh, I guess I can make one there too. For the top part there you go left click control r there you go left click and drag over so remember uh when using the loop cut loop loop cut is control r whatever edge your mouse is hovering over it's going to cut an edge perpendicular to that edge make control r right here left click and pull it down left click there you get one for the bottom of the door here and pull down left click there and one for right here the middle part control r Left click, drag over, bam. Left click, drag over, left click there. And I think I made that one on the inside. Control R, left click, drag over, click. And Control R, left click, drag over, click. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Just kind of just eyeballing it. No one's really going to notice. This is door handle, so I'll make this one a little wider. Control R, left click, and drag it about there. I think that bottom part was kind of thick there too. See what we got over here, Quickie Mart. Yeah, the bottom part's a little thicker there. So I'll make a uh, thicker one up there. And that's good right there. Enter. All right. So now I'm going to hit one for front view. I'm going to select the faces that I'm going to extrude for my door here. So these are going to, it's going to be my door. So then I'll left click. I'm just clicking them here. It's going to select all the panels that I'm going to extrude right now to make the, the front. And pulling those. Am I pulling those? 
I'm not going to pull those. All right, those are going to stay there. So hold on, shift, left, left click them again. And notice I'm not doing a whole loop select. The whole the down control alternate shift selects the whole loop. And I'm not trying to do that. I'm trying to select the, just the panels here for the door and for the window. Hold on, shift, left click in these faces. Switch over to face selection. And not those. Oops. There we go. And all these ways. See for circle select. And just drag across. Hold down left mouse button. Drag there. Make the mouse small. Make the selection. Uh, circle select smaller. Spin the wheel. And left click. Do that. You know, I can just deselect those later. So I'll try that. Left click. Hold on shift. And deselect the ones I'm not going to extrude there. So you want to you want to see what you're going to want to foresee what you're going to extrude. There we go. See, hold on shift key, deselect those. And it's like that, 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 that there. Right click to turn off circle select. All right. So I got my door here. Oh, not these right here. As far as the windows there, there's no panel there. So it should look something like that. All right, cool. So I'm going to hit E to extrude. Pull that out. Cool, there we go. And now I'm going to push in the windows a bit. These are going to be my windows here. See for circle select. I'm just left clicking here with circle select. There we go. Oh, I don't want that one. Hold on, shift. There we go. And then need to extrude. I'm going to go inward a bit. There we go. Cool. So I got my door there. And oh, there's no panel there either. All right, so I messed up on that selection there. So undo, 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 undo. Cool. And see for circle select and deselect those there. There we go. E to extrude out. If you want to leave it like that, if you want to keep those there um, extruded, you can do that as well. Uh, another thing you want to do is all this extra geometry here. If you're going to render this for a video game, you're going to want to get rid of those extra edges there. So if you go over to edge selection here, alternate A to D select, C for circle select, and just select these edges here off to the side that you're not going to use that aren't part of the final project, you can dissolve them. That's not going to get extruded. That's real cool. There we go. So that's not getting extruded there. And there's stuff back here as well. And all these right here, these are not getting extruded. So I'm sitting C for circle select. And I'm selecting all these faces here. C for circle select. And holding on left mouse button and dragging across. Notice I'm not selecting the, uh, the structural edges of the cube, the original ones, like these going up and down right here. And those right there, just the ones I added here with the loop select. Oops, and I don't want to select those at the bottom either. Let's see, turn off the tool. There we go. Hold on, shift. Oh, come on. All right, see, for circle select, hold down left mouse button and drag across there. And so if you want to use for a video game, you're going to want to do this here. If it's not going into video game, it's okay. You don't got to worry about trying to remove those. X key to delete, you're going to dissolve edges, dissolve edges. There we go. I don't need these here either. X key, dissolve edges. Cool. Now I'm going to go back to face selection and adjust these faces here. Treat them inward a bit. They're just from the windows. You can leave them there as they are. You can also pull them back. Cool. I'm going to select the roof here. And I'm going to make this roof there. E to extrude, then S, just freehanding it, pulling out, whatever looks good. That looks good, one from front view. Now I'm going to extrude up, whatever looks good. Left click around there, S for scale, get that roof shape there. So obviously this door here is longer, we'll, we'll fix that later. Let's see, I'm trying to work on the height right now, see it's a good height for the roof. That looks good. Now I'm going to hit ES, create like an inset here, go inward. It's not proportionally sealing in. Let me see. Undo. I for inset. There we go. Hit the I key instead, and you get a better proportioned one. And left click there. Now E to extrude. I'm going to go down. And there we go. 
All right, so I'm gonna make the store here a little longer. So I'm gonna hit Shift Z for wireframe. And back to vertex selection. I'm gonna drag select this top part here. I'm gonna hold on Shift and drag select this section here. So I wanna select these because it's part of the, just to go with the geometry there. So I'm gonna hit G, X, one enter. Make it wider there. And I'm gonna do the same thing for this side, but it's gonna be minus, minus uh, one. Drag select these. Hold on, shift key, drag, select that right there. And then G, X minus one, enter. There we go. Shift Z for solid view. There we go, got a quickie mark there already. So now we can start doing and start coloring it. So we can start getting a look and feel for it. So we're gonna go with the main dominant color first, which is this orange light color, this lighter orange color here. It's like a dark orange, is that like a burgundy? I don't know, well, let's go with the dominant color, which is this right here. So I'm gonna go over to materials. And so that I can see my color, also switch over to render. There we go, base color right in here. And orange light color. That uh, looks good, maybe make it brighter. And click in here, it's gonna name it walls. There we go. Cool, now for the roof, one for front view. Shift Z for wireframe, face selection. Alternate to deselect. Alternate A to deselect and select this whole roof here. There we go. And that's going to be Shift Z. That's going to be the starker color here, starker orange or burnt red color. Plus sign for new material, new here. And I'm just going to call this color roof and make this reddish color here. Let's see, make a red orange color. And that looks, let me try that. Assign. Let's see, tab key. That's not bad. We'll go with that. Tab key. All right. Now these panels, they're like, uh, I made them here a chrome color. And the, the cartoon series, they're like this uh, weird beige brown color. This one right here in the game has that silver color. So I'm going to go with that silver color. So face selection. I'm going to hold on the alternate key and try, try to see if I can select this whole edge there. Cool, I got it. Alternate shift and try to select these other edges there. I don't want that. Control Z undo. Let me try these other ones over here. Nope. Control Z undo. There we go. There we go. There we go. I'm going to just hold on the shift key and select these other faces here that I want to select. And I'm only going to select the ones that are in view. I'm not going to worry about the other side because I'm going to close the camera on this side of the, of the building. So I'm not really concerned about the about the rest of the, the thing. Let's see here. I'm not really concerned about coloring the other parts of the of the store. All right, so I'm using circle select to increase my selection abilities. You need, when you use a circle select, if you accidentally select something you don't want to select, let me just do this. Probably be easier just to do this. There we go. And right click, hold on shift key, and just deselect the panels I don't want. The faces I'm not trying to color right now, which are these windows here. There you go, that's a lot easier. I do want this one. And cool. So if you use a circle select, See, for circle select, click here. Go into deselect it, hold on shift, click it, click it again, and it'll deselect it. All right, so plus sign. New. I'm just going to call this one panels or frames. I guess I'll call it frame. Frames. Make a silverish color. I'm going to set a sign already so I can start seeing it. Tab key. Cool, tab key again. Uh, metallic, so I'm going to increase the metallic about halfway. Let's see what settings I got over here for that. Frame, so metallic at about 0.54, and specular halfway there as well. Specular halfway, and the roughness brought it down to 0.1. One enter, all right, tab key. All right, looks good. Let me select my light source here. I'm in object mode. G for gravity and Y, put it on the front of it. So I can start seeing it, cool. Now I'll make the windows here. So the windows are kind of like this off blue color I went with, glass. I guess I left the white. All right. So tab key. Oops. Select my building here. Tab key for object mode. There we go. Now I gotta select my windows. 
So I'm using face selection here to select these windows, holding down the shift key as I left click the windows here so I can multi-select them. I know it's kind of hard to see because of the colors very similar. So I'll make a color for the windows here, plus sign, new, name it windows or glass, whatever you want to call it, glass. And let's see what kind of uh, settings you got here for the windows. So metallic 0.4, specular at one, roughness zero. So metallic at 0.4, specular all the way up to one, and roughness all the way down to zero. There we go. Assign, tab key. Cool, looks like glass already. All right. So I got the main body of the store there. Maybe I'll make the little AC unit that's there. And that's just that purple color, very common in the Simpsons. All right, so I'm bringing another cube, Shift A, Mesh Cube. The giant, giant cube there. One for front view, G for grab, just bring it up here. S for scale, whatever looks like a good size. Seven for top view, G for grab, put it around there somewhere. S to Z, make it a little more narrow. That looks good. Now I'll make a smaller one, put off to the side right here, smaller cube. It's going to be smaller and it's going to be uh, lower than that one. So Shift D, just move that over there. S for scale. SX, make it a little longer. G for grab, position it around there. I bring that up. Cool, that looks good. Let me click away from it so I can see a little better. There you go, maybe I'll pull it up some more. G, Z, pull it up. As long as it doesn't go uh, above that, so it's a little over. Cool. Let me give that uh, that purple color. So new. It's gonna call this one AC here. Uh, call it the darker purple. There we go. Select this one as well. And then I already made the material, so I can just click on the material icon here to the left of new and select that existing material there. Cool. There we go. So uh, next, I'll make the the ground here or the sidewalk. I think I'm gonna go with the with the sidewalk. So that's also a cube. All of this right here this is all cubes right here. This is all cubes. So Shift A, Mesh, and Cube. There it is, three for right view. G for grab, put it up here. S for scale. G for grab, position it around there. S to Z, make it more narrow. All right, G, Z, pull it down. Three for right view, let me zoom in. G for grab, so. You want to decide you want to put it up there. If you put it up here, it's going to block off the front of the store there. And you can put it down here. It'll, be, it'll sit at the bottom of the store there. The height here of the, of the cube, uh, don't worry too much about it. You're going to bring in this cube down here at the bottom, and you're going to hide it anyways. All right, so one for front view there. And then S for scale, and then X. Snap it at the X axis. That way you just make it wider here. And make it about the same width as the building there. Left click. Cool. Let's close out this gap. Three for right view. Decimal key, zoom in center. Zoom in. G for grab. And I think I'll put it in right there like that. All right. So now I'm going to make the, the big uh, floor here, the, the top, the black top. Uh, first, I should probably color this here. So new. And it's called a sidewalk or concrete whatever you want to call it. I'm going to use the same colors for the, the curb stop there, whatever these are called. And I'll just make a grayish color. And there we go. Roughness all the way up. Make it nice and dull. Specular down. You can see the, what parameters I set there. Specular 0.5, roughness all the way up. Yeah, cool. All right. So now I'm going to shift A, mesh, bring in another cube. Ready for right view. G for grass, put it over here somewhere. Uh, S Z, make it more narrow. There we go. G for grab, put it around there. And now I'm gonna scale this up uh, in every direction except for the Z axis. S Shift Z, that way it doesn't scale along the Z axis. There we go. Looks like a good size. So as you can see here on this one, I kind of put it off to. Uh, I didn't necessarily put that in the corner, but I left a smaller gap there, kind of like a little alley. I didn't make this wall touch the building there. Just give it a, a better look here, having a little alley there. All right, so center for top view. But I did make it uh, go just a little bit off here off the back. So GY, GY, pull that up. 
There we go. And pull it up this way, GX. There we go. Give myself more room on this space, GX. All right, there we go. The building's kind of floating there. So let me select the building there. Three for right view, tab key, shift Z. And then we're here to vertex selection. I'm just gonna select the bottom of it here. And then GZ, pull it down into the black top there. That way it goes inside of it. And there we go. Tab key. All right. I'm gonna color this black top here. Obviously I'm gonna make it black, new, and name it a pavement. And I'm not gonna go all the way black, just kind of like a darker, a darker color there, almost gray, like a dark gray. And let's see what else I changed in here. It's like a roughness and antistropic all the way up. Anisotropic. Oh, oh there we go. Cool. So now to make the curb stops here. So that's gonna be another cube. And I'm gonna give it the same color as the concrete there. So shift A, mesh, cube, GY. So it looks like I accidentally activated the uh, this tool right here. So I'm gonna turn it off. It's the active tools. So I'm gonna go up here, click on a little chevron, and turn it off there. Oh, they're handy, but I don't like using them. I just like using the shortcuts here. All right, three for right view, S for scale. Try to get it to a good size. Let's see what we have here. So I think here, let's see, I think they're lower than the sidewalk. Yeah, they're lower than the sidewalk. So you can make them as high as, as high as the sidewalk. It's up to you, it's your design. But don't make them touch the sidewalk. All right, that's good there. SX, make a little wider. You can go with two or three of these. Make sure at least have two of them. Uh, I tried making four in this one, but there were the, the parking lots just look, uh, the parking uh, spaces just look a little too narrow. SX, there we go. Three for right view, decimal key to zoom in center. I'm gonna take it to edit mode, tap key. And Shift Z for wireframe. I'm gonna drag select the top here, make it a little more narrow along the uh, Y axis. Axis S Y. There we go. One for front view. I'll make it slightly narrow here along the X S X. -X. There we go. See Shift Z. Looks good there. Tab key. One for front view. Maybe bring it down a little bit more. Cool. Then for top view. And I'm going to line them up here. So I'm going to G for grab. Then X, pull it out over here. There we go. Shift D X, pull one out over here. Just eyeballing it. Shift D X, pull one out there all the way over here. You know, I'll make it line up with uh, with this edge here. G X. This one kind of middle-ish. Shift Z for wireframe. G X. And there it is. Cool. So now it looks like they are about equally uh, distributed. If uh, you want to be a perfectionist about this, you can use the array modifier, but I think it was just faster just doing it this way instead of going all the way in there using the array modifier. And then for the strips here, uh, you can add um, loop cuts in there to try to draw them. What I did, I just actually just added a whole, whole other cube in there and just colored it white to make these here. All right, so we're getting to color these here. So I'm going to select one, hold on the shift key. I'll just select the other ones. Oh, not that one. And deselect that one, cool. So these right here, I'm gonna make um, the, the concrete color here. So I'm gonna click right here on my marble and that sidewalk right there. So it's only gonna color one, the, um, the active object. So to color the other ones, make control L and then go down on materials right here. It will apply to the other ones, cool. So that was control L. So now I'm gonna bring in the uh, another cube here to make the, the floor, shift A. S cube, not the floor, make the uh, the paint strip there for the parking spot. S for scale, G for grab, and then it's going to be the longer on this side, S, Y, side bowling it, G for grab, maybe it goes all the way up there. Where does this one go? Yeah, it goes right before the, the spot there. S, Y, doesn't have to be super long, three for right view. G, Z, pull it down, and just have it stick out just a little bit, just enough so that you can see it. Not enough that uh, it'll cast a notice, noticeable shadow. That's good. Paint, uh, it's kind of thick anyways, right? It's a new fresh coat on there. So new, and 
it's going to call this one white enter and for base color you can just bring this all the way up right here the value and that'll be white if you know hex codes it's going to be a bunch of f's and there it is all right roughness i guess it's kind of reflect this so i'll leave that alone so i'll just leave those settings as a center top view i'm going to put one over here shift d x and just eyeball bullet try to put it in the middle that looks good right there click away cool looking good we've got our parking lot going now i'm going to make the wall in the back this wall right here then i'll make separate cubes for the little brick pattern there so shift a mesh cube one for front view g for grab pull it over here and right there make it more narrow sx G X, pull that over, touch the wall there. That looks like a good height. Stand for top view. Try to put it in the middle somewhere, just eyeballing it. And then S Y, make it longer there. G Y, S Y. There we go. G Y, stick out the back a little bit. It's not, you're not going to be able to see it. If you like this wall here, uh, after you're done making the wall a little bricks, so you can just copy and paste one over here on this side so you can get a wall in the back. So I think in the Simpsons, there's a wall back there too. Yeah. All right, so now I'm going to color it that beige color. So new. Let's call this one wall. Enter. And beige kind of like color. There we go. That looks good. Maybe make it a little brighter. There we go. And now to bring in another cube just to make a brick there. Then I'll duplicate that cube. Cube. Set for top view. G for grab. S for scale. 3 for right view. Let's see. S Z. Looks a good brick size there. S X. Make it more narrow. One for front view. And position that cube inside the wall. About halfway. Enough so that um, it'll cast a shadow. Noticeable shadow. A little bit more than half, but that's good. You don't want to stick out too much, but something something reasonable so that it'll it'll cast a shadow. I'm gonna go back in there for some more GX. GX. There we go. I think I'll go with that. That looks like a good brick size there. So I'm gonna color this one a darker shade than that. So new. I'm just gonna call this one brick. And go in here somewhere and bring this down. Click out of there. Cool, looks noticeable. Ready for right view. Let me zoom in. Oh, pan, hold on, shift. And I'm just going to duplicate these from the right view. That way I don't have to worry about one being a inner inside the wall, more or less. So shift D, and I'll put one around there. Got to leave some space for the, 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 mor the mortar there. Shift D, and we'll put one up there. Shift D, let's put a random one over here. And then you can just duplicate these here. Shift D, moving out over here. R, X, 180, enter. There we go. Uh, at least want this to line up right, so it looks a little realistic. So people might not notice, but you never know. Every once in a while you get somebody like, yeah, hey, that brick doesn't line up. So I may bring this one up too. And this one, I guess I'll put it like right there. You don't want to overdo it with the bricks, you just want like the essence of it. And I think I need some more over there, so I'll duplicate these right here. Three for right view, shift D. And there we go. So you're not going to make every brick, just some right there, just so you know it's a brick wall. You know what, every brick needs a buddy, so I'm going to give this one a buddy here. I don't want any breaks by themselves. There we go. Cool, cool, cool. If you want to make the one back there, why not? Let's do that. So center top view. I'm going to drag select this here. My drag selection tool is not working. Let's see here. There we go. So I accidentally got that too. Hold on, shift key, left click it. Left click it again so it's not, um, not selected anymore. Now shift D, R, minus 90, enter. Oops, minus again. There we go, enter. G for grab. So it was just R, 90, enter. And position that over there in the back. 
Oh, so there it is in the back. It's a little bit off on the side right there. So we're top view, one front view, nine back view. GX, move it over to the left. Make sure there's no gap there. Well, just in case. Let me see. Control one for back view. I'm gonna scale at uh scale just a wall on the x-axis and pull it back over here, kind of like in the middle, and click just on the wall, not the bricks, because then the bricks are also gonna scale out. SX. That should be good right there. Cool. See over camera view. All right. <clears throat> so now I'm gonna make the dumpster. So the dumpster there is this off green color. I'm not gonna make this whole wall right here. We just want the uh, the essence of it. Uh, there's these pay phones here. Right now, who the heck uses a pay phone? Like where are the pay phones at? All right, you don't really see those anymore. Mesh, cube, there it is, send for top view. G for grab, let's put it out over here. That's a good view for that. All right, S for scale, G for grab. <clears throat> Not bad, let's see SX. G, X, and G, Z, pull it down. Let's hover, hover uh, above the ground a little bit. Obviously, dumpsters have wheels, so you can see there. The one I made here, there's no wheels, but no one really noticed it. So I'm going to leave it without the wheels. So one for front view, and make it stick to the wall here. G, X, that looks good. Tab key for edit mode. Shift, Z for wireframe. Drag select this corner here. G, Z, pull it down. And get that dumpster shape there. There we go. You want to make it longer, A, S, Y. You can do that. And this one here, I try to make this um, this part right here where the dump truck comes and picks it up from. So control R. And I want to get the horizontal cut right here. Spin the wheel. Get two of them. Left click, left click. Then S, Z. Scale it down. Make it a little more narrow. There we go. So I know that part in the back is a little wider, but it's all right. I don't mind. So face selection, Shift Z for solid. Select this face here. Three for right view. Just gonna extrude it out a bit. All right there's good. I'm gonna make it a little more narrow along the Z axis. S Z. And there we go. Maybe pull it that way, so it's gonna be S X. Not too much. There we go. And I gotta make the trash lid here. I'm gonna select the face, the top face there. ES, scale out just a bit. The knee is gonna scale up. S for scale, inward. There we go. Make the cut here for the two doors on the dumpster. Enter, enter. There we go. And then maybe do something with the uh, uh, the doors here, the lid. Face selection, select this face, and select that face. And let me see, see if this will work. ES, not like that. I'm gonna hit I, I key for inset. Nope, not gonna work either. So I gotta change this right here. See, undo, undo, all right, undo. I'm gonna go up here. I'm gonna click on this button right here, medium point, and individual origins. That way if I uh, scale, extrude, or anything like that, it'll do it with respect to its own individual face. So ES, ah, come on, it's about to be an inset. Control Z, all right, so I just undid that. So I, still, you bastard. All right, so I'll select an individual face, ES. There we go, just freehand this, select individual face, ES. All right, now they'll, they'll respect it. So I select those individual new faces I made. G for grab, pull it up a bit. And that's cool right there. <clears throat> All right, so the dumpster is like this weird green color. It's green, blue color. So new, dumpster, trash, whatever you want to name it. It's like this nice, cool uh, tree color. Let's see. I guess that's cool right there. A little darker. All right, there we go. And then I want to make the doors black. All right, so Shift-Z. Drag, select the faces here on the doors. And you guys only got these back here. Hold on, Shift, deselect those. And I just want to get the top part there. So plus sign, new trash lid and these are just going to be straight up black just all the way down bam i may make it a little shiny a little specular assign shift z tab key there we go 
Don't she looks good. There we go. You want to make the dumpster look metallic, go to dumpster and increase the metallic. Not too much. It's going to make it shiny. And you don't want to be too shiny. Nice, clean dumpster. All right. So now we just got to make the, the sign right here. And that I use a cube. And then I beveled it. And I used the uh, text tool there. Shift A, mesh cube. 3 for right view, G for grab, space it up here. S for scale. They want to make this 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 sign S Y never along the Y axis. There we go. One for front view. S X make it wider. And there we go. Three for right view. Zoom in. S Y make it a little more narrow. I guess that's good. G for grab. Put it here on the front. There we go. Make it stick there. I just noticed the roof is a little bit off on the back versus the front. So I mean three for right view. Select this building here. Tab key, vertex selection, shift Z. I'm going to select these vertices here. G, Y, pull this out. There we go. Shift Z. Oh, tab key. Select this one here. G for grab. There we go. All right. So tab key, take that to item mode. I'm going to bevel these edges here to make the sign around. Just like the quickie mark sign. Just a little round around the sides. So edge selection, select this edge there, hold on shift key, select this edge, hold on shift, hold on shift, so I left click those. All right, cool. Control B, just pull it out, spin the wheel, that looks good right there, enter, enter, or just one enter. Cool, so I got my sign there. So the uh, outside perimeter of it, it's like a purplish color, or off blue, and then white and green there. All right, so let me see if I can do a loop cut in here. I think it's too late for a loop cut. Control R. Yeah, it's only a loop cut there. So instead, I'm going to hit one for front view. And I'm going to use a knife tool to draw the, the cut here all the way across. So I'm going to hit the K for knife over here somewhere in the middle. Left click, drag it all the way over. Try to line up that magenta line. And there we go. Left click, enter. All right. <clears throat> so first, I'm just going to go with the that light purple color, new. Sign rim and purple color there, brighter. That looks good. Now I'm going to go to face selection, select this face here. That's going to be green. Plus sign, new, sign, green. And it's going to be a greenish color. What kind of green was that? It's a darker green. It's a nice, strong, noticeable green. Bright, vibrant sign and then this one here is white i already used white down there so i can use that existing one there so i'm gonna hit the plus sign here and then i'm gonna click on the marble right here and look for my white that i used on the floor earlier uh where's that other white oops there we go white right there a sign cool tab key there it is maybe i'll make this purple a little more purple doesn't look purple enough Not the same shade as that one. There you go, a little lighter. Cool. So text one out and make the sign here. It's going to be Shift A. Text tool right here, text. I'll click it. It's going to come in. It's going to be facing the top right there from top view. Number one from front view, then R, X, 90 enter to pick it up. There we go. G for grab. Put it in there. Three for right view. You can see it's in the back. So G for grab is put up front right here. Let's make it a little more 3D. So I'm going to go over here into the... Uh, text data and then I'm gonna open things on the geometry yeah geometry extrude right here increase this number you make it thicker let's see let's go with 0 0.10 0 0.9 uh, a little too thick so 0.7 looks good there 0 0.6 0 0.7 I'm gonna hide half of it inside here anyways part of it all right so one for front of you then edit the text I'm at the tab key and you just type in the name of your store so mine was called Blendmark. I think I'll call this one uh, Savage Smart. Savage Mart. No, let's call it Blendmart again. Blend R Mart. Let's see, Blend R Mart. We'll do that. Blend R Mart. There we go. Tab key. So it's humongous. I went back to object mode. So I'm gonna hit S for scale. Bring it down. You know, G for grab. S for scale. G for grab. Make it fit inside there. 
or let me go tab key again. What I should have done using the arrows keys, let's make the uh, the dash in there. There we go, arrow keys, dash. There's space in here, backspace, tab key. There we go, that looks better. Blend our mark. All right, I can make this taller. And I'm gonna use the scale for that SZ. There we go, G for grab, SZ, Z for zebra. There you go, three for right view. I'm gonna bring it in, G for grab. And just partially in, there we go. And it's, uh, the letters are red. So materials here, new, sign text. And go with the red color there. Nice, strong, vibrant red. There we go, cool. Blend our mark. There you go, there you have it. Is that it, that's it. Out of the back wall right there. So now I'm gonna make the, like a plane for it. So you can see it, see over camera view, just the camera as well. So I make a backdrop. So I'm bringing a cube, mesh cube, and just scale this cube the heck out of it, like that. Let me zoom out. All right, tab key. I'm gonna delete this vertex here. The one on the side of the camera. X key, delete vertices. Open it up. There we go. Edge selection. Select these edges here. I'm gonna bevel them out. Control B. Pull the mouse out. Add a lot of that geometry there. Nice smooth background. There we go. Tab key. G for grab, GZ, pull it up. So it creates a shadow below it, a little shadow catcher there. There we go. I'm gonna have a touch, I'm not gonna have a touch. I wanna float in somewhat in the air. And I wanna add some color to this. So new. And I'm just gonna call this one backdrop. Backdrop, there we go. Base color, go with the sky color. You can just leave it, uh, you can just make it white as well. Look cool color there. Here's my light. Maybe I uh, see what if I make it brighter. 5,000. Oh, not 500. 5,000. One, two, three. There we go. Cause this one over here, I'm actually using a spotlight over here, so it creates all these cool shadows in the, in the back in the backdrop. See this one? It's a little bright. Three. G for grab. Not bad. So I'll play around with the light later. So first, what I probably want to do, CGX, is um, select my Select my resolution for my frame. <clears throat> so just the camera. So I'm gonna go over here to animation. There's my scene, so camera here, center top view. G for grab, pull it back. Let's see, how does that look there? I'm gonna G for, uh, I'm gonna hit R for rotate. I'm gonna hit X, then X again, and pull it up. Try to center that there, there we go. G for grab, go further back. And if you want to make this for Instagram, you're going to have to change the frame resolution. It's going to be right here in output. So in Instagram, it's a one by one ratio. So these have to be equal here. So 1920, I'll make the Y also 1920, which is the height. And the X is the length. There we go. Now I've got a square there. Cool. So I'm almost zoomed out all the way. Let me keep going back. There's another way of doing this as well, but I like this one better. So I'm in GZ, pull it up. Oh, and you're going to see the top of it there. You can see the AC that I spent some time on. Back to layout over here. Zero for camera view. And now I would play around with the lighting, see if I like the lighting there or not. So I got shadows there, there. I uh, added the back wall that was not in the other artwork. So I'm at F12, see what I get there. <clears throat> it's a low poly uh, convenience store. Here's my store in, uh, with the perspective view. Let's say, for instance, you want to do an orthographic view. So it looks like it was made in Illustrator. So to that, to do that, you go right over here. You're going to go over to the camera, select the camera. So I'm select the frame here, select the camera, camera data type, change it over to orthographic. There we go. So now it looks uh, a little more square. Let me, uh, so, so adjust the camera, use a different method, and hit the end key for Nancy. I'm going to go over here to view. I'll carry on to view and spin the wheel to zoom out. Oh, it doesn't work that way either. All right, so forget that. Go over here to animation. And actually, it's in here. Orthographic scale, just change that right there. There we go. So now I have to move the plane over so it covers up that corner. GY. There we go. And I got the I got everything inside the boundary there. Cool. F12. 
so now I'm noticing that I got this uh, panel right here, this part of the frame that just went into the to the door. I don't want that there, so I'm gonna clean that up. So I got the building here selected, decimal key, zoom in center, tab key, and let me select these right here. So I'm gonna drag select there, drag select there. They hold on the shift key. I held on the shift key in the second drag select, and deselect these windows here. And let's check out the bottom there, zoom in. Let me try to get the bottom there selected, decimal key. There we go, zoom in. Hold on shift, select the bottom part here. And I'm gonna hit the X key to delete. And I'm gonna select faces. There you go, so now I gotta patch that up. So vertex selection there. Let me change the angle here, there we go. And drag select uh, this edge here, F for fill. And then drag select this one here, F for fill. F key will fill in the face in there. And angle like that, drag select there, F for fill. Drag select there. F for fill, and I gotta fill in these right here. Hold on the shift key, select those edges there at the end for the mirror there, F for fill. And the cool thing is selecting the colors there from the surrounding mesh, F for fill, cool. There we go, tab key, and there you go. Uh, if you wanna use this like a gaming asset, what you wanna do is uh, first convert the text here into mesh. So select your text, right click it, and then select convert to mesh. There you go. Also by doing that, then you can go back in here and select the text. You can take it to edit mode and you can individually um, play around with the text there. So I'm gonna select this L right here, the R. I'm gonna uh, click on it, have the mouse on it. I'm gonna hit L, little oh, L key, L key. I guess it's not a one solid object. So I'm gonna hit Shift Z. It's gonna drag select all these vertices here inside of that R. There we go. I'm gonna scale this one up, make it a little bigger. G for grab, S for scale, there we go, tab key, shift Z, there you go, so looks a little neater there, and what happened here, so the way the geometry was on a little weird, control Z undo, I'm going to undo that, so instead, shift Z, I'm going to drag select the whole thing, I don't want to drag select that over there. So C key, hold on shift. There we go, drag select. All right, I'm going to hit X key. Uh, limit it, dissolve. Get rid of some of the extra geometry there. Now let me see if that works better. Oh, it's still separating it there. You bastard. I'll just leave it as is there. All right, shift Z. All right, now I'm going to drag select everything here. Not the light, just these assets here. Hold on shift key, drag select there. Everything selected. Oh no, it has to be yellow. I mean, uh, I don't want to get the plane. There we go. So I'm going to hold on shift, make this one yellow here so it becomes the active object. And then control J to join them. There we go. Now they're one object. G for grab. Oh, we didn't get those bricks. Come on. Three for right view. Hold on shift, drag select there. Shoot those bricks. I don't want the backdrop. Hold on shift, click on the backdrop. There you go till it stops glowing. Now control J again. Let's see, I need to have an active object. We'll make this one the active object. Control J. There we go. G for grab. Oh, everything goes there. Z over camera view. So now you have it as a gaming asset. And you can have it here for Instagram as well. F12. And should uh, render without those without those frames there. Excellently made earlier. Cool thing is we can see the reflections here in the window. You can see the floor reflect there. Out of the extra wall. We have that shadow that's being casted there. There we go. So you can also zoom out some more so you can see the rest of the shadow. But uh, there it is. Uh, if you like this video, like this tutorial, hit me with a like, subscribe, comment, uh, hit the notification bell, a share, anything helps. Thank you for watching. Have an awesome day.